My name is Amy. So today I have a video that's on the topic of hearing from God. I feel like it does fit very well into the series that, you know, I've been working on, which is on prayers. So this topic is how to hear more from God, because I think that that's one thing that when we get to a certain point in a prayer life, it becomes a question of, well, I'm doing all this praying, but I don't feel like I'm hearing from God. How can I hear from God? So this video is going to be tackling that particular question for you. And I hope that it blesses you. If you're interested in hearing more, stay tuned. So the first thing that I think is important for anybody looking to hear God more is to get into the word of God, get familiar with God through the words that he's already spoken and have been documented. The more you read the Bible, the more familiar you get with God and his ways, right? Cause we're not reading it just to, I don't know, clear the Bible in one year or in three months. We're reading it to learn who God is, to know more about him, which is the only way that you're going to be able to hear his voice. So spend more time reading the Bible, get familiar with the words of God through the Bible, and it will prime your heart. It'll prime your spirit uh, in a place where it, you can actually hear from God, both you know from the word and then when he's speaking within your heart, okay? There's no way that we can know for a fact whose voice we're hearing if we don't even know who they are. So if I heard a voice outside my room now, I'll know if it's my son or if it's my daughter. Why? Because I spend time with them. I already know the difference between their voices. So it's easier that way. Now, if you spend more time with God's word, when you hear something within, you'll know if this is something from God or if this is something from your mind or if it's something from, I don't know, just the enemy or whoever. So spend more time in God's word. You can never be wrong by spending, uh, by studying the word. The second thing is just like I said, spend more time with God. And that's not only from um, studying the Bible, it's also going to come from prayers, spend time in prayers. The beautiful thing about engaging in spiritual exercises that help to, you know, like build your spirit is it helps you actually learn to live from the spirit versus living from your feelings, your emotions. And we know that those things dwell on the soul level or on the fleshly level. So when you spend more time in prayers, it, it, it conditions your spirit. It conditions your life to draw from the spirit because you're essentially feeding your spirit doing these things and so you start to pull from there and you'll find that the more that you do it you'll start getting these like those things where i say like oh a voice just told me something just told me right that's how it works the more time you spend praying the more time you spend studying the word you'll get to a point where your spirit is conditioned to just receive from god and you know that that's something that didn't come from you and it's a, a it's guidance that's going to actually help improve your life. So don't you know skip prayer time. And the reason I always emphasize prayer is I think that a lot of us come from a generation where we were trained to depend on other people to pray for us, right? So we had the praying mothers, and we have our pastors, and you know different kind of people, people who would pray for us. But we're coming to a point in our walk with God, and even in this time here on earth, where everybody is going to be required to register their own voices in heaven. You're not going to be able to depend on the prayers of someone else. You're going to need to build your own prayer lifestyle and draw from it. That will be the well that you draw from and even your family, your children will be able to draw from that. So spend time in prayer because that's one of the ways that you're going to know when God is talking to you because he will do it in your place of prayer. And so when you're moving around in life, you'll know when God is speaking to you because you're familiar with that voice from when you were praying. Next thing is do not despise the little nudges that come from God. Sometimes because we're waiting for this big voice that's going to loom from outside, from the clouds, right? The, the cloud is actually going to part as well when that voice comes through. Because we're waiting on that dramatic version of hearing God, we tend to miss out on the very little ways that he speaks to us. Sometimes he'll speak to us through people around us. Sometimes he'll speak to us directly from the Bible. Sometimes he'll speak to us in dreams, right? And we're like, oh, you know, that was just me being busy through the day and you know I was just whatever no do not despise the little ways that God is going to speak to you he'll speak to you through people he'll speak to you through, to you through circumstances there was a time when God spoke to me through just literally something that happened when I was driving and I'm telling you like I heard God just speak to me through that one situation and the funny thing is before then I wouldn't have even picked it I wouldn't even have understood it but when it happened and I heard God speak to me about that matter. I was like, oh, wow. You know what I mean? So you want to not despise the little nudges. It doesn't have to be a voice booming through the clouds that tells you that this is God talking to you. A lot of us have been spoken to by God through like dreams, 
Um, and because we're not like our pastor who says, as I was standing here, I heard God speak behind me. We're thinking, well, I'm going to need God to speak behind me too before I take this to be his voice. No, God is speaking in many ways. There are more ways that God can speak to you than you can even hear from him. So do not despise these different ways that God is going to speak to you um, if you're going to learn to hear God better or even more consistently in your life. Another thing to pay attention to is the spiritual authority over you. The truth is this, we're not called to a life of isolation. We're called to family, we're called to community. Um, you know, the Bible says, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren, right? So when you're starting out in your walk with God and you're trying to figure out how to hear God better, how to hear God clearly, do not despise the voice of the spiritual authority that's over you. And if you're saying, well, I don't have anybody because I'm just out here, you know, seeking God, you need to find someone, right? Because God is not going to come down physically to build you he's going to do it through people he's anointed through spiritual leaders even when the children of israel were going to come out of captivity he had to send a man he could have just told pharaoh pharaoh let these people go and then one day pharaoh gets up and says everybody out he sent a man he sent moses so you're going to need that you look at the life of samuel when he was in the house of eli and the first time he ever heard God's voice, you know, he heard his name Samuel and he went to Eli. The first time Samuel says, I didn't call you, go back to bed. He did that again. You know, Eli said the same thing. Eventually it became clear to Eli that this boy was hearing God's voice. But guess what? Samuel did not know that it was the voice of the Lord. So if he didn't have the leadership of Eli to stare him, he probably would not have matured to understand that this is God actually calling me. And another angle to this is this, when God starts speaking to you initially, it may come either in the voice of or through the voice of your spiritual authority that's over you. So if you're not a part of a local assembly or a community of believers that are, you know, rooted in the word um, and guided by the Holy Spirit, it may be time for you to find one because as a young believer, as an early Christian, chances are God will speak to you more through the spiritual authority that's over you. So in the case of Eli and Samuel, Eli was able to guide Samuel to let him know, hey, when you hear this, that's God calling you and here's how you respond. So it's going to be very important for you to identify the right spiritual authority over you and um, grow in your knowledge of God and the voice of God under their leadership and under their mentorship. That way you'll be able to protect yourself from strange voices because we all know that it's not only the voice of God that's speaking to people. Jesus went into the wilderness, he fasted, he prayed, he came out. Whose voice did he hear? He heard the devil tempting him. So we know that it's not only the voice of God that's speaking, but you're going to need that spiritual authority that's going to teach you how to discern the difference and how to identify when God is talking to you. So don't run away from spiritual authority. Find one that you can trust. Seek God's guidance on if that one is the right one for you and let that person guide you. Another thing that's going to be helpful for you as a believer, and this is probably like as you begin to spend more time right, um, with God, it's going to be important for you to be a master of the ways that God speaks to you. In reality, God doesn't speak to every one of us in the same way. Or he may speak to us using all the different channels um, that he does use to speak to his children. But for each person, there's going to be probably one aspect of your life or one channel that's stronger than the rest. And if God ever needed to pass a message to you that he did not want you to get confused with anything else, he's going to more than likely use that channel. So you're going to need to become a student of the workings of the Holy Spirit within you. One thing that I think that a lot of us sometimes do is we'll see somebody who we respect or we look up to in the faith and hope that the way that God expresses himself to us and through us would be the same way that he does for them, but that's not gonna be the way. You may have a pastor who maybe God speaks through through visions, or sorry, God speaks to through visions, and it's possible that in your life you may not see a single vision, but maybe you do get a lot of dreams right or maybe you get a lot of knowings these these are different ways that god speaks to us some people get a very strong knowing like you have no idea where this comes from but you know it with a lot of certainty that nobody can shake that and you're accurate most of the time when you do pay attention to it so you're going to have to get very focused 
and, tr and, and be intentional about learning how God speaks to you. For some people, the predominant way that God speaks to them is visions, open eye visions, visions of the night, I don't know, whatever that is for you, that's the way God speaks to you. For some people, it's dreams, right? Some people, it's him directing you to certain portions of the Bible and showing you certain things that most people do not see. Whatever the way that God speaks to you, get very uh, intentional about developing that area of your life, about developing that aspect of your life so that you're able to mature in it and that you're able to be very clear when you receive those signals from God. Initially, they may start out very fuzzy. They may start out very like unclear. And this is another reason why we need spiritual authority, right? Because sometimes you can take those to these people and say, hey, here's what I saw. Here's what I heard. I'm not very sure. It didn't make a lot of sense. What do you make of it, right? So get intentional about, you know, learning and maturing in the aspect of your life or in the channel that God chooses to speak to you. And the final tip is this, and you know, I cannot do a video on prayer without going into this is speaking in tongues, speak in tongues, speak in tongues. I'm telling you that it's going to change your life. When you're speaking in tongues, a lot of the times you're speaking deep mysteries. Sometimes you, and you have no idea, right? Cause you're just going and going and you have no idea that you're literally speaking um, blueprints. You're speaking answers. You're speaking strategies, right? And you'll spend that whole time in speaking in tongues and be like, well, I'm not really sure what came of this, but if you want to compare your life when you start speaking in tongues after a period of time to what your life was before then, you'll know that there was a sharp difference. Why? Because you start to distill revelation. You start to distill wisdom. You start to distill answers when you spend time speaking in tongues. And you may have spent maybe 30 minutes speaking in tongues on a particular matter and you didn't hear like a loud booming voice while you were praying. But guess what? You leave there and as you're going through your day, you start sensing things. You start picking up knowings. You go to sleep, you start having very detailed dreams very vivid dreams that map out answers for you, that map out strategies that explain things to you in a way that you couldn't understand. I have a testimony to share here. I remember a time when I was in college. I was, I think it was my second year or my first year and I was in the engineering program and we got to this part of, um, I think it was calculus, right? I forget what it was, but there was this part of our engineering math that I just did not understand. Um, I tried to study it on my own. I went to extra lessons. I went to one-on-one -on -one tutorial sessions with like, you know, the most brilliant kids in the class. I did not get it and I was freaking out because we had our final exams coming up and I still did not understand this thing. And I knew it was gonna be the majority of our exam, right? So if you didn't know it, you might as well not even show up for the exam. And I, I tried my best. I studied so hard. I had people explain and these were very smart people. So, and I'm not, I, I mean, I'm not stupid, right? So I was like, why do I not get this? And this was like days and we were inching closer and closer to the exam. And I'm like, you know what? I've done everything I can do like here in my strength and I, I don't know what else. And at that time in my life, I was just starting to like, you know, start praying in tongues and starting to, you know, get into my relationship with God and getting intentional about it. And so one night, and, and I can tell you it was not even preempted. One night I went to bed in that dream, I cannot tell you who it was, but this person comes to me and starts solving these complex equations that I could not understand when I was awake. This person starts breaking down this complex concept for me and literally solving those equations. And I'm just watching and like, I'm understanding. And I tell you, I woke up from that dream. I jumped out of my bed because it was a bunk bed. So I was in the top bunk. I jumped on that bed, jumped out of the bed, grab a paper and start like writing down these things that I got out of that dream. When I tell you that after that dream, I went back to the textbooks. I went back to the notes, everything. And it was like light, light just came out of it. And I not only understood it, I understood it to a point where I could actually teach other people. And I think it was the next semester. I was picked as one of the people who would lead like the, you know, little tutorial pods, like, you know, people who would do one-on-one, -on -one you know, coaching for other people in the class. I'm telling you, 
amazing, right? Because here where it came from, I tried my best to understand this thing. And when I left it for God, I said, God, I don't understand this thing. And I just spent my time praying. Somebody comes in the dream and breaks it down for me. And I'm telling you that till I graduated from my five year engineering program, math was never a problem for me. It didn't matter how difficult that, you know, that level of engineering math was or what course it was that involved math. I just had received this ability to understand and teach it to other people. So yeah, that brings me to the final um, closing for this video. I hope that everything that I shared here, I hope something right resonated with you. I hope something blessed you. And if it did, be sure to thumbs up the video. It helps YouTube share this with more people, subscribe to the channel, and you can help share this out to friends, sisters, whoever you know that could benefit from something that we've spoken about here, right? So thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye.